Hi team, I hope you're all well. Today I will be doing my best, worst and most surprising of 2019. So my most surprising is different to my best of 2019 and my worst and most disappointing are the same. So I've just combined that option and done separately for surprising and best, if that makes sense. But we're gonna do it all in this video because I'm quite late to the party with this and um, I'm not really one to go on and on about books that I've not enjoyed or anything like that and I've probably gone on about them a lot anyway throughout the year of 2019 so we're not going to continue with that I'm just going to go through and tell you about them very quickly what I loved about them what I disliked about them and that's it so we're going to start off with the worst because you know I always ask for bad news worse so that you can get some good news after so some of these I'm unhauled, so I won't have the book. I will show the picture. So the first one is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I did not like this book. I was so disappointed because obviously we got the really, really pretty fairy loot edition. It was gorgeous. The edges were sprayed. They were absolutely beautiful. I think I must have sold this on because I cannot find it anywhere. And I wouldn't have just given it away. So I think I've probably sold this on. Um, I... I'm not sure why I didn't like this book to be honest. I The premise for the story was fantastic. I really really liked the idea of the story. I just didn't get on with any of the characters. I didn't fall in love with it. I didn't particularly like it. I wasn't a fan of its execution. I just didn't I didn't get on with any of the characters at all which for me is a really big thing. I need to get on with at least one character in a book for me to enjoy it. So yeah, I just didn't really connect with the book at all. I gave it three stars. It was okay. I could understand why people would love it, but I did not like it. So it's in my most disappointed. These are not in any particular order, by the way. Then there's Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I, again, didn't get on with any of the characters. I have decided not to continue with the series, so I haven't read Legendary or Finale. I just did not like it. I didn't get on with it. The writing was quite flowery, which actually is something that I have realised very, very recently. I don't like in books, so I am not one that likes you know, very lyrically flowery writing. I don't particularly like it. I, de I DNF'd The Night Circus back in 2018 because of this reason. And I have recently just DNF'd another book for the same reason. So I think it's just something that I struggle with. I've actually put back down The Starless Sea because of this. I really want to try and get through it, but I think there's going to be a high possibility I end up not getting through that book, which is a real shame because I've heard good things. But... Nevertheless, I don't get on with it. I don't particularly like it. So with Caraval, that's one of the reasons. Another reason, again, I didn't get on with the characters. There weren't any characters that I really sort of meshed with and really enjoyed. So yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of it, which is a shame because I know it's very well loved in the community. So you know another one that's very well loved in the community is the raven boys by maggie steve Orta. again i haven't continued with the series i do keep thinking about trying to because i believe it gets better as the series gets goes on but just didn't care i wasn't bothered this didn't really get what was happening i, I didn't understand what was i just didn't get it i did not get it at all didn't get on with any of the characters again i wasn't really bothered the only character whose name i can remember is blue because it's one of the titles of the books later on so i just i wasn't bothered i didn't understand it i was really gutted because i know it's kayla from books and lala's favorite series i was devastated because i really really wanted to like it but you know not everybody's gonna like everything everybody else likes if does that make sense so I didn't like it. Um, another one I didn't like was Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. I, oh, fucking hell, I was devastated by this because I was really, really hyped for it. I've got all of the books like available on my library at the moment and I just can't bring myself to carry on with it. I was really, really hyped for this because I know that G from Book Roasters really enjoyed it and I know a couple of other people have really enjoyed it. I struggled because it's extremely political. You don't get a great deal of time with the robot. So essentially a young girl falls into a robot's hand and she grows up to become like a doctor in 
mechanical sciences or something like that and she ends up trying to find the rest of this robot however a lot of this is done in a very political way it's more to do with discussing how this could affect the world and things like that and if there's others around there and all that lot rather than actually sort of you know finding robot pieces there are bits of finding robot pieces and working with the robot but there's not a great deal with it and I've come for the sci-fi I have not come for the political side of it so part of me wants to carry on in the hope that we get more sci-fi than, pol than politics but I just struggled with the politics side of this there was more politics than sci-fi and it was a it was a dud for me I gave it three out of five stars I was devastated to be perfectly honest um in fact I actually might have dropped that down to two I was really that gutted so yeah and then finally, um, The Tall by Neil Shusterman. This is the third in the Ark of the Scythe series. I was not happy with this, how, how this went down. This is a really big book. It's the biggest in the series. And essentially, the majority of this book, I don't think this is an unpopular opinion by any means, the majority of this book is following a bunch of new characters, which why would you do that in the final of a series? Like, why? Bring them in the first book, maybe in the second, at the beginning of the book. But don't do it in the third book. What are you doing? We've come for Citra and Rowan, not everybody else. Like, what? Honestly, I was devastated. Not happy with how this went down. Again, I gave it three stars. I think I'm being too kind here, though. Maybe I should be giving these, like, two stars because... I mean, I know the writing's good, so that maybe that's why I ended up with three. I know the writing style's good. Um, We did get a bit of Citra and Rowan in the end. I don't know why I gave it three and not two, to be honest. Maybe I should drop another star. But I wasn't a fan. Again, a load of politics in here. So, again, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I mean, I know that the Arca Scythe series can be quite political anyway because of the nature of the... of the um, Because of the nature of what's happening. But I... It's not bothered me before this book. So... I just really really noticed it in this book I was not happy with all the new characters I was not happy with the political side it just was a dud for me again so gutted was the word I'd gone all that way with a series that in all honesty the Thunderhead was my favorite one I gave Scythe three stars Thunderhead four and then the Tall three stars maybe I should have given the Tall two because I actually kind of enjoyed the Scythe I just wasn't a huge fan of it like everyone else was so I don't know I don't know um surprising so most surprising books of 2019 so this is a collection of books i'm doing five books for each section by the way because otherwise it would have got silly if i'd have done like 10 um so for most surprising books this is a collection of books that i have picked up um either reluctantly because of the hype or because i want to read it but it ended up surprising me a lot more than i thought it would so to start this off, we have The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I have not moved this book on. It is still on my shelves. It's just at my mum and dad's. My dad's been reading it, so I don't physically have it with me. Um, the Hound of the Baskervilles. I have wanted to pick up something by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle for a while. I love Sherlock Holmes. I was going to say I was obsessed with him. I'm not obsessed with him, but I love Sherlock Holmes. I've gotten more obsessed with Sherlock since the BBC um, adaptation of it with... Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. I'm really, really enjoying their di dynamic, dynamic, their duo. I really enjoyed them too as Sherlock and uh, Watson. So really enjoy them as a duo. The Hound of the Baskervilles blew my socks off. I listened to it on audio and the narrator was David Tim Timlin Timson. I will check that out and leave a link, let, let you know down here. But I really, really enjoyed his narration. It made me laugh out loud. I just really enjoyed it. The Hound of the Baskervilles was a great story. And David's narration just really added to it. I love Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's writing style. It just really surprised me. It blew my socks off. I thought, I'm going to enjoy this because it's a classic. But didn't I... It, freaking loved it I gave it five out of five stars it was fantastic and I do highly recommend if you're going to listen to the audios listen to those ones I know there's a lot of them around on script there's like several different ones but that's the one I ended up picking up David Timson Timson I'll just I'll let you know down here 
really really good highly recommend it really really loved it um second i again these were in no particular order i really enjoyed meet cute by helena hunting i loved this i was ready for picking up a romance and this ended up being a really steamy romance this was like smart in the end and i really loved it because i haven't picked anything other than the 50 shades of gray series i haven't picked anything up that's sh like super smutty like this is and i didn't know whether or not i would enjoy Oh, yeah, I didn't know whether I thought might find it a bit awkward or whatever but I really really loved it it was fantastic this is following two characters so it's told in duo perspective um, but it's done really really well so each chapter um, has a title but then it tells you from which character you get in the perspective from so we're following Kaylin and Dax Kaylin and Dax ended up at university together. Kaylin had a big crush on Dax and she kept bumping into him like really clumsily at uni. Dax was like the jock if you like and Kaylin was probably like the nerd or the geek if you wanted to put labels to it. Um, eventually they obviously went separate ways and then something happens in which I think Dax's parents die and his younger sister he ends up having to look after her so he goes to a lawyer's office solicitor's office turns out it's Kaylin who's the solicitor on his case and they have to work together but she like really really hates him something happened in which um, I think Dax ended up copying her off something off a paper that he got through and she didn't or something like that Can't fully remember because it was like the beginning of 2019 when I read this and uh, Romance and shoes so hate to love I really really enjoyed it absolutely loved it five out of five stars I actually kind of want to reread it so this may come up on to 2020s TBR as a reread I'm not sure we'll see um, Next I have Dumpling by Julia Mur Julie Murphy I picked this up as part of a readathon at the end of 2019. This was the buddy read. So I picked this up kind of reluctantly actually. I didn't really want to read it, but I couldn't get the audio book anywhere. So I picked the book up. Turns out it's a floppy book, which I was really, really happy about because I love floppy books, similarly with Meet Cute. Um, so I picked this up. I kind of knew the story because I know there's a Netflix movie adaptation as well, but which I hadn't seen because I did kind of want to read the book first. I'm trying my best to do that now, but it doesn't work, always work out that way. And I freaking loved this. I thought it was fantastic. I loved the relationship between uh, Willow Dean and her friends. I loved, well, a friend that she ends up falling out with actually. So I loved that relationship. I can't remember her name which is really, really bad. Ellen. Uh, yeah, Ellen. So I loved the relationship between Willa Dean and Ellen. I loved the relationship between Willa Dean and her mum. I thought it was really, really good that the way that was portrayed. I loved Willa Dean as a person. I just thought she was fantastic. I thought she, the way that she was portrayed was outstanding. Um, the fat representation in this was outstanding as well really well done i loved the relationship between willa dean and Bo, and i just loved everything that willa dean stood for i just thought she was amazing the movie adaptation is not even half as good as the book unfortunately i just think that the movie adaptation sort of missed out on a lot of what brought willa dean and Bo together um which I know you can't put everything in, but all of a sudden in the book, in the movie, all of a sudden Willa Dean and Bo were like in a relationship. And I was like, that's not how it works. There is a lot that goes into this and you can't really miss it out. It doesn't make sense otherwise. It feels very rushed, but I freaking loved this and I cannot wait to pick Pudding up. I'm so excited to pick it up. I gave this five out of five stars in the end. I do highly, highly recommend it. Um, then another book that surprised me at the end of the year was A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy. I think I gave this four out of five stars but it just really really surprised me and knocked my socks off. This is a fantasy and this came in a fairy loot box. It's got black sprayed edges and it's signed and this is following two sisters who have to fight to the death to become queen essentially. One of them has come into her magic, the other has is struggling with it. She's not sure how to control it. The two sisters are called Eva and Isa. Um, Mum and Dad have split up, so uh, the Queen is on Team Isa's side and the her husband, ex-husband, is on Team Eva's side. And um, we're following the... We're following Eva. Who, I'm not sure which of these characters Eva is, to be perfectly honest. 
yeah it was really really good i really enjoyed it. it really surprised me it's the start of a series and i really really enjoyed it it blew my socks off i didn't quite get five stars i can't remember the reasons but um i did enjoy it nonetheless and i really was surprised about it i wasn't going to pick this up but it's only because of the buddy read that fairy loot do that i actually picked it up i really i managed to get the audio as well which helped so I really enjoyed it. It was very, very good. Finally, on the surprising list, I have got On the Fence by Casey West. This surprised me. I have picked up a couple of Casey West books and they all surprised me, to be perfectly honest. I, re I was surprised at how much I really love them. I've been picking Casey West up because Kayla from Books on Lala really enjoys Casey West. Um, and this one in particular really surprised me. So I thought this was just your typical contemporary book um we're following charlie who is a 16 year old girl who's been raised by her dad her mum died a few years earlier and well actually when she was a baby she doesn't really remember her mum and um her she's got three brothers and her best friend is also a guy who is best friends with her brothers as well so she's essentially deemed to be a young 16 year old girl brought up with it by her dad and four brothers if you like because they're all a very tight-knit group she hangs out with them all the time she plays football with them she plays all sports with them she plays sports at school she's very much a tomboy she doesn't have girlfriends she doesn't wear nice girlfriendy clothes like girly clothes and she doesn't wear makeup or anything like that she ends up having to get a job because she gets caught speeding and her dad has told her he now has to, she now has to pay this ticket off because it's like the second time or something so she goes to get a job it ends up being quite a girly shop and she picks up on some things she starts to learn how to hang out with girls a bit more and she starts to change a little bit but she has a crush on her best friend and this is sort of like a relationship that begins to blossom but in the background there is a lot of shit going on with charlie and her mum essentially so charlie struggles a lot with nightmares and her mum, we don't get the full story until the very end, so I don't want to spoil it for you, but her mum, the way her mum died gives Charlie nightmares, and she doesn't particularly remember her mum, her brothers won't talk to her about it because they get really upset, her dad, she doesn't really want to bother her dad with it, and eventually, slowly but surely throughout the book, you begin to realise that something else has gone on here, and even her best friend knows about it as well, he knows what's happened, because he remembers, and I think his mum spoke to him about it or something, but Charlie's blocked it out, she doesn't want to know so she's blocked it out she doesn't remember what happened i will sort of mention which is a bit of a spoiler but i think it's important people know because honestly i was really shocked about it there should be a trigger warning in here for suicide it's in here for like a split second but it is there um at the very very end so just be careful with that but that is what shocked me and surprised me and really brought this story forward on another level than just being a contemporary romance if you know what i mean so i friggin loved this i was obsessed with it I'm, i am obsessed with it five out of five stars it was unreal and one thing that i did notice about this pile actually um i know river of royal blood is fantasy but one thing i did notice about my surprising pile was that i really should be picking up more contemporaries because obviously i love them so I should be picking them up more instead of focusing more on the hype of fantasies and sci-fis that are going around at the moment. So something I'm going to try and do more of in 2020, I actually made it one of my goals to pick more contemporaries up because I do enjoy them and I'm not giving them the time they deserve because I'm trying to keep up with the hype of all the other new books coming out that are always fantasy and sci-fi. So that's my intention. So for best books of 2019, I will be doing these top five from number five. So this took a lot of thought because I had a lot of books in 2019 that I freaking loved. Like honestly, these should probably be all, all on par for number one top spot. But anyway, we we'll just just bear in mind that this top five is literally like it's that big. Like <laughs> they're that close together. This is how close they are. So um probably not a shock to anybody but maybe a court of mist and fury is in at number five um by sarah j mass i read all of this series in the space of about two weeks i just couldn't stop i was obsessed but out of the well three and a half books this was my favorite obviously my least favorite was star what is it called oh they're up there the the novella i really really didn't like that i thought it was a little bit pointless and redundant i understand she's done it to sort of fit in between this and the next one because she's taking her time but 
it was pointless it just there was just no point to it so Court of Mist and Fury I love this I know it, I think it's pretty much everybody's favorite that's read the series to be perfectly honest so nobody's surprised whatsoever it gave it five out of five stars I really loved it I'm obsessed with it I love Resand I actually really love Feyre I just really really enjoyed it it was fantastic I highly recommend it I do want to do a reread at some point but I don't know if I'll get it in this year maybe next year we'll see number four takes the spot for stalking jack the ripper by kerry manny scalco this actually would have been on my surprising list if it wasn't for the fact that i really freaking loved it and wanted it to be in my top five so i love this whole series i only finished it in january like this year but i started this last year and we i read the first one myself but buddy read the rest of the series with my friend siobhan and it just added to the experience it was so good i loved this series it was fantastic i loved the whole series to be perfectly honest but obviously stalking jack the ripper had to make it onto here um because this is where it all started with audrey rose wadsworth and thomas cresswell i love them i just think they're really really great i really love this series honestly i can't you just pick it up you'll love it it's amazing the audiobooks are really really good as well i highly recommend them i honestly think if i tried to get through this physically reading it i would struggle maybe not so now that i've listened to the audio but it is quite scientific so try the audiobooks number three i have gemina by j christoph and amy kaufman this is the second in the illuminate file series so the first is obviously illuminate the third is obsidio and i've picked the second because i actually really love the story in the second one we're well, first one we're following katie and ezra I think in the second in the first one but in the second one we're following nick and hannah and i really love this relationship in here first one in illuminate it is a sci-fi and we there are two corporations that are fighting essentially one blows up this planet in which ezra and katie are on it they manage to get out onto some spaceships but separate spaceships they manage to start communications they've just split up they've managed to start communications and there is a lot more going on behind the scenes there is an ai that controls the ships called aiden and there is also a virus out there that's causing absolute havoc it's wreaking havoc everywhere and katie and ezra are trying to help find, figure out what's going on essentially and then this sort of follows on from that story so nick and hannah were following a different couple then um who aren't a couple to start off with um, Nick's into Hannah, Hannah's got a boyfriend, Hannah sort of uses Nick for drugs and she is like the daughter of the guy that runs the ship essentially and shit goes down and these two end up coming together to help each other out and it just blossoms from there i really really loved it i love the relationship i love the story that's going on in the background i loved being with aiden again um aiden is that villain that you love and i just really enjoyed it actually this one creeped me out a little bit there is a bit of like horror going on in here it's a really freaking freaky to be fair so but i really really loved it out of the three of them this is my favorite one i can't wait to pick this back up again and also this series is done in multi um what do you call it multimedia format so you have like emails and you have uh transcripts there are even some pictures of you know people in here that are on squads and stuff and that slowly and surely people are going through killing and there's just all sorts going on in here you've got bits from aiden the ai who controls the ships i highly recommend listening to the series while following along with the book i will be doing a reread of this this year i loved it so much I gave everything five out of five stars the whole series and i loved it that much i'll be doing a reread so gemina was my favorite out of them though definitely then in second place we have i heart hawaii by lindsay kelk this was just the most beautiful end to such an unreal series this series starts off with i heart new york which i've reread this month in the month of january i'm going to reread the whole series now that all of the books are finally out and just have it you know go all the way through um so the series starts off following angela clark who is at her best friend's wedding with her fiance she nips out to the car her feet are killing she's got these super expensive louboutins on she nips out to the car to go and get flat shoes and finds her fiance in the back seat of the car with another woman turns out he's been seeing this woman for a long time and it's not just you know 
sleeping together he's super into her and instead of breaking up with angela he's just carried on with her so she freaks out panics grabs her bag that's got like a laptop in it and a few bits of clothes and a purse and a passport and gets on the next flight to wherever turns out it's going to jfk so she ends up in new york she goes to a hotel the nearest hotel once she gets into manhattan and she walks in and the concierge jenny lopez who becomes our legendary Jenny, ends up helping her out and realises that she's in a massive funk. She finds out what's happened, she ends up helping her out, introducing her to New York and helps Angela out, essentially, with trying to sort her life out. She's got no idea what she's going to do. Angela is a writer and Jenny really, really helps her out. She becomes her best friend and this series is like seven books long. I think this is book seven, unless this is book eight. I can't remember. And this book the series just carries on you are following angela you're following jenny you're following a bunch of other characters in this series and i really friggin loved it so so much this was the last book in the series i was devastated that it had to end but you know lindsay's gonna write other stuff so that's fine um I'm hoping that in future she might dip in and out and you know maybe do a story from somebody one of the other characters sides of things i mean she's done a couple of short stories like jenny lopez has a bad week or jenny saves christmas or whatever but they're really really good and i really enjoy them so i loved this five out of five stars for the whole series um and this book as well the ending for this had me crying my friggin eyes out it was just so perfect and i loved it it was amazing I loved everything about this i just love lindsay kelk in general and then finally number one was a curse so dark and lonely, lonely by bridgie camera is anybody surprised i don't think so i've done nothing but ramble on about this since i read it mid last year and i bang it on about heart so fierce and broken which i now finally have and have this is a beauty and the beast retelling it with a twist we're following harper who has cerebral palsy and we are following prince wren and also gray who is prince wren's sort of like footman is that what they call them i can't remember i've literally just reread this as well um we love all of harper prince wren and gray we love them all a lot um harper lives in washington dc she gets kidnapped by gray and taken to emberfall where prince wren is cursed essentially the whole castle is cursed and there is only prince wren and gray living there at the moment because some shit went down and um we're just following them from that story i love this because it's done in such a way that um harper's cerebral palsy is not a f she doesn't let it hold her back she will try and do as much as she possibly can without it affecting her too much so i just love that side of things i love the rep in here for that and then i loved the relationship that blossoms between her and gray and also the relationship that blossoms between her and ren and i also love the extra stuff that goes on towards the end of the book there is another sort of story going on in the background with this and it's so so good i just really really loved it i loved everything about this even the second time round. in fact i probably loved it more the second time round. so i'm really hyped to pick it up a heart so fierce and broken i think i'm just worried i'm scared it might suffer from middle book syndrome or whatever or i'm scared it's going to be so fucking fantastic that i struggle again i mean i didn't struggle too bad i managed to read probably more in the second half than i did in the first half of the year but i'm worried that he's gonna hold me back and i'm gonna do nothing but think about it all year because that's what i ended up doing with it last year with the heart so fierce and broken so we'll see i don't know we'll see but i'm really really excited to move on to the second one i loved this so much five out of five stars best book of 2019 hands down it was amazing and i loved it so those are my worst surprising and best books of 2019 uh, but let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this video let me know if you have an, any of the same opinions of me or different opinions of as me obviously we don't want to fight down there but <laughs> just chat to me in the comments let's have a natter let's talk about the books let's talk about all the books um and i shall see you next time bye for now